you can start. Okay. Unfortunately, I can't progress my slides. You're, go you're gonna tell me to. Ooh, okay, that's gonna be interesting. So let's go to the hummingbird picture <laughs> so I can welcome everyone. Um, and I, I started with this picture of my hummingbird feeder that hasn't gotten many hummingbirds to ground me after a very difficult day of advocating for library staffing in present preparing for this presentation. So I think we need to all remember to be grounded um, and show gratitude as we deal with difficult things as librarians, particularly the book bannings. You can go ahead and progress. Can you see my face? You can progress the slide. Yeah, normally we would be able to see your face, but because I'm managing the slides, I'm guessing. Okay. So let's have a key word to advance. I'll just say advance. How's that sound to make that short and sweet to advance Easy. the slide? Perfect. <laughs> All right, so I'd like to see the one with Glenn, um, Glenn Beck's face. All right, so I'm not going to spend much time, particularly since we had a late start due to technology, um, on the background of how and why I came here today. Um, but I am assuming that many of you are like me and realize that our society is showing uh, qualities of tyranny, but more on that later. In 2010, our school faced a challenge spearheaded by a political group inspired by Fox News' Glenn Beck and fueled by a, a side of the internet that I wish I never knew existed. This group was a systematic plan to prevent evil liberals from indoctrinating children with their homo agenda, and I quote, those are not my words. And from the open social media site that they were using, I could see all of their communications. They had no privacy settings set, and I became privy to their outright racism and hateful, violent agenda. And this at, all occurred at a time when President Obama um, would take office in the White House and supported human rights, particularly those of the LGBTQ community. And this caused an outrage amongst the 270 plus 912 members in the county where I live and work. If you want more information on that, um, there are links to the presentation that we gave at ALA in 2011. And also you could see the personal essay that I was asked to contribute to Dr. Shannon Altman's recent book, The Fight Against Book Bans. And I recently joined a webinar to hear other contributors to the book. And one speaker reminded the audience of librarians not to get overwrought when handling challenges and to remember important things like family and friends um, that matter um, more than our life's work. But I felt a pang really remembering and knowing when you experience harassment from your community um, and you recognize the fear of the potential loss of freedoms in our democracy um, as you experience a book banning, it is terrifyingly worse, worrisome. You can change the slide, advance. <laughs> and the recent onslaught of challenges and the emotional and physical toll, you can advance the slide unless it's a, Thanks. Um, the recent onslaught of challenges and the emotional and physical toll that they take on the individuals fighting for the books are well documented. Not to mention the narrative that we are projecting to in individuals whose lives are represented in these banned books, whose lives they document. Um, we are telling them that they are less than. Those leading the charge of banning books and influencing our schools and government are not in favor of allowing us to think for ourselves. While conversely, librarians promote access to information. These groups want to limit it and to control the minds of others. They want to control school curricula and libraries, both school and public. Um, and I know this from my experience and the primary source documents that I have upstairs in a box. And here we are still 13 years later, which has provided me a lot of time to process and to see what has transpired in our society through the lens of the challenges that I fought. And I hate to say we are closer to the threat of tyranny than I ever 
thought possible, and those are not words to say easily publicly. And let me be clear that these attacks on our institutions that provide educational opportunities are just a few targets on the far right's quest for control. Libraries are a small part of a larger goal. You can advance the slide. When the great minds of our time are warning us of pending dictatorship like Madeleine Albright and Dan Rather, um, we need to take heed. And there's a wonderful graphic novel version, if I could call um, the topic of tyranny wonderful, um, available to us and to validate us, um, to, to show us that we are not alone in our fears of the loss of our democracy. You can advance the slide. But regardless of our fears, as librarians, we have an obligation to protect intellectual freedom. And I would argue um, that this is only just one of our many intertwined and interdependent ethical codes that are so worth defending. But I have to be honest, people are ignorant of what librarians do. And I think we really need to think about this fact. You can advance the slide. When I ask my students, who are many and varied over my past 32 years, and I'm fortunate to be a teaching librarian, I ask them, what do librarians study? And they don't know what to say. They say English, but inevitably many of them agree that it's books. And we have a dialogue of what's inside of books. And eventually they come to the understanding that we study information which I tell them I would argue is the essence of our being. And this is clearly stated in our library program that we study information in this place. You can advance the slide. But book bannings reduce us to books instead of the world of information, which is constantly changing. You can advance the slide. How it's organized and manipulated and how Google and apps are data mining and creating a hierarchy of information. And I tell them what's the latest form of information that librarians need to wrap their head around. And they grasp that it's AI. And of course, they are very intrigued by this concept. But when, like, when young people hear what we study, that we um, learn to help combat censorship and protect the right to their privacy, which they are interestingly um, concerned with, and that we promote equitable and ethical access to information, they are fascinated. They understand that this is something that is of interest to them and of concern to them. And I tell them that I would argue that we are one of the last in institutions to defend these freedoms because it certainly is not going to be the owners of social media or apps. You can advance the slide. And so I would say that we need to think about educating the populace with our purpose and of defending this institution, that libraries are their right, and that teaching the value of libraries and promoting support for public institutions like schools and libraries are very important, but we need to change our perception in the public eye. You can change the slide. Remember the book I mentioned, Tyranny, earlier. A wonderful book that warns us of the characteristics of such a horrific event in society, but it also gives us solutions and tactic, tactics that we can use to prevent this from happening. And one of them is to defend institutions. Um, like public education, which is the requir requirement of a democracy and equal access. Of course, this depends on where you live, um, the quality that you receive, but that's a, day, a talk for another day. But I believe that this is the message we need to share to help our cause, to tell the public that we uphold rights to access and privacy and education for the masses, that we are one of society's attempts to promote equality and justice. You can advance the slide. But this message has to be carefully crafted. And I'm only throwing out ideas, a skeleton of ideas um, to assist in this. We need to do it together. But many organizations are already trying to do this. Of course, the wonderful ALA has talking points um, to help us um, 
get our message across. But I'm saying I think we need a more succinct public service message, so to speak. You can advance the slide. A couple organizations that I highly recommend um, see, look, checking out. Go ahead and advance. I'm smiling as I ask, <laughs> are um, the Unite Against Book Bannings campaign. They provide talking points, um, social media post examples, not to mention great merchandise that we can purchase. And one of the best qualities of this um, website or initiative supported by ALA is a questionnaire that you can send to political candidates and ask them to pledge their support for libraries. You can advance the slide. Another organization that does just the same almost is Every Library. Um, they monitor legislation that criminalizes libraries and librarians. They offer pro bono, bono pardon me, um, training for citizens groups and libraries to engage voters. You can advance the slide. They have tons, both of these organizations have tons of corporate sponsorship, which was, um, enlightening to me. I urge you to check out their sites if you're not already familiar with them, join their efforts, receive their email updates, utilize the valuable resources that they provide. You can advance the slide. Another initiative by ALA is this concept of an ecosystem. I'm sorry, can you advance that? Thank you. Um, this ecosystem is so important as it calls for a joining of various entities in society. And I am very fortunate to live in New Jersey where we have taken advantage of this concept and our professional organizations are presenting at the school board association at the state level to educate school board members. They are educating administrators, principals, superintendents. They do professional development sessions on libraries for these groups. Again, back to that education. And librarians in New Jersey, you can advance the slide, um, have taken this ecosystem and worked diligently for years to produce some really excellent um, laws. The first one, we are the first state in the nation to mandate information literacy education in the K-12 public institutions. And right now there's a new bill that some legislators are um, joining to create on making it difficult to obtain state funding where any book is banned in both school and public libraries. And there are more than a few states taking initiatives like this and fighting the battle with lawsuits, which I would say we need to have. This um, lawsuits have to occur in order for us to have change with the help of the ACLU and other organizations. And they take have given pre, um, tireless hours and are also willing to share. All of this information is available into, on the internet. The laws and legislation and the documents can be borrowed and taken hopefully to other states. Um, but we need to continue these efforts. But I'm gonna suggest that we go beyond this bubble of this ecosystem and think about the people who are in power or who have power in our nation. Um, could you just change the slide for me, please? And there are several different people in power or groups of people in power that I think that we could enlist. First of all, those who have a, those of us who have the benefit of tenure and unionization have uh, the ability to take the risk to support um, what we need to do for libraries or people like me at the end of their careers who do not fear job loss. We need to support um, these efforts. And I venture to say that public librarians have very little job protection. So we really need to employ the intellectual community that benefits from the uh, protection of tenure. We also need to continue to employ the people in politics. I think we're doing a great job compared to where we were in 2010. Um, but I do believe the time is right for change after what, watching what has transpired in 13 years. Now we have the attention of other people in power like journalists, the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, our 
publishing articles on libraries and our purpose. Publishers are enlisting their support. Authors are paying attention. These, all of these groups would have really validated our efforts in 2010. I'm so proud that since those 13 years, we have broadened the circle of those acknowledging these troubling attacks on libraries. And then I have to say, and go out on a limb here, and we could brainstorm and have fun with this, is we need other people in power in our society are people who are stars, who are artistic and athletic. Um, and right before COVID, I sat with three other passionate librarians who uh, endured the challenge with me. And we brainstormed that maybe we should contact ALA and maybe Helen DeGeneres or Reith Witherspoon to pick up our cause um, and make the message more widespread. ALA has always had celebrities on their read posters. By the way, if anybody has a KRS-One read poster in their archive someone, I'd pay, somewhere, I'd pay money for that because mine was stolen uh, many years ago. But maybe ALA can tap into these celebrities who have been on their um, read posters. Public television and public radio could help us. Judy Bloom, of course, a huge advocate. Amy Sony, whose um, collection is the one that is banned in our library. Susan Orleans, the library book, a great testimony. Jill Leepor, someone who is a great mind of our time and understands the politics. Um, heck, maybe we could have a concert where people, the, the artists do it pro bono and all of the proceeds go to help uh, those who, who are enduring and spread the message that we need. Um, who do we know? Who do you know um, that you could take a risk and reach out and try to spread our valuable message? I mean, KRS One and Cardi B are only two people that I thought of that I admire um, their style. And when I Googled them for this presentation to see that what they had maybe possibly done with libraries, I was surprised to see that both of them already have taken initiative in various forms with public education support or libraries. Another person that graduated from my high school that I make contact is Roger Reeves, New York Times Best Poet of Poetry Book of the Year. He went to my high school and teaches at my alma mater, University of Texas, where there's a slew of horrific things happening to librarians. Maybe he would help with the initiative um, so I think we need to take a specially crafted public service announcement, a message of freedom and a library's attempt at equality and go out on a limb and let's reach out to more people who have power and influence in our society. Heck, at the very least, they might donate some money. Um, so this was a little awkward and not at what I expected because of the technology, but I thank you for working with these institutions. Can you advance to the last slide, please? Um, I'll never be disappointed that I'm a librarian and spent my life's work doing this. Um, and I'm going to finish with a slide that I finished with at ALA's, um, one of the, at the conference that I presented in um, 2011 about our um, systematic book banning and I want to just point out a couple of things about this slide that brings out a lot of emotions in me and remembering that I have always lived with the mission that from the Library Bill of Rights that my job is to support the intellectual growth and personal development, individual interest and recreational needs of my students. And um, Judith Krug's words of, or Krug's words of intellectual freedom leads to intellectual participation. And I really have hopes that this will become truth. And at that time, I advocated for the ecosystem of academic and school library and public library um, coordination. But now I'm going to say we need to reach out and uh, go beyond our comfort zone to the celebrities who have a lot of power as well. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the <laughs> Well, how was that? <laughs> We're off the cuff. <laughs> Thank you.